What's up everybody? We are back working on grub worm. We've been working on grub worm for a good while, but we are on our last step finally. We're gonna be addressing the hot side merge today. For those of you just stepping into the videos, I've got all these updates numbered for 2022. Just check them out uh, through our video list. But our last video uh, showed you step-by-step -step welding these headers together. Remember, we're going with 321 stainless steel this year, two inch primary instead of inch and seven eighths. We've got billet collectors now. We've got the adapter flanges that really beef up the flange against the head and make it a big round port straight out of there. No, you know, funky shapes or anything like that that we had to do. So I'm pretty sure these headers are gonna be a lot stronger just if not just for the physical size difference of the primaries but because we brought these two short primaries out the front instead of making the primary so long the more stainless you have involved in a setup the more movement you're going to have just like an exhaust system whenever it gets hot it grows a lot you know a system that's from the headers all the way back, you get that much stainless involved and you throw the heat to it, things are gonna start moving around. So the shorter you can keep things, the less movement you're gonna have, but at the same time, you don't wanna have little stubby primaries uh, because a good long primary will uh, increase the efficiency of your air pump or your engine. So all this 321 on the headers come from Profab. They're local to us, but the rest of it come from uh, Ace Race Parts. They are in Washington State. They always have good quality products. I really like these little elbows here because for one thing, they're perfectly round on both sides. And if any of you guys have cut a mandrel bend up close to the bend, that thing is not round whenever it comes out. If you don't have some type of uh, expander or something like that to get it back round it's uh you're squeezing it in the vise or whatever to get it back that way or get it close but it's never as round as one of these elbows drops right in that v-band there but last year the collector was up here we kind of went down at a diagonal and had the double slips right here well that angle was causing the headers to push out because it kind of uh just the way it was, uh, it was arranged like that it made the headers try to spread when he got on the two-step i believe adding a little bit more uh curves to the hot side itself will make that a lot more rigid and make it uh help keep the header from trying to move, especially a 90 like this. It's gotta come around, then it's got a 90 back into here. So it's gonna be like a, a shepherd's hook or something trying to hold it still. Cause we're not gonna put any double slips in this year. I don't think that he'll have a problem with the uh, flanges warping or anything as thick as they are now. So we're just not gonna put something in there that's gonna give him any issue. Just, just since we had those issues with the double slip. Double slips, fine for a car that doesn't leave and sound like an automatic 12 gauge when it uh before it launches that's really hard on the piping because when that fire is blowing out of the pipe and you hear the percussion of that thing hitting your chest when you're at the track just think of how the pipe feels trying to contain all that so that's what we're going to do today we're going to get the camera set up and uh hopefully uh, try to plan this thing out and get it all tacked together, maybe even welded together today because we've got to get this thing done this weekend so you can get it Monday. So let's get started. So 
So while the saw is cutting the piece over there, I just want to show you how I mock this up without wasting materials. It's 321 because I can't get any if I was to run out today or this weekend in time. I'm using just scrap pieces of aluminum I've got piled up in the back. This is three inch. Basically just using it as a, a bridge between my joints. And once I get it mocked up, I can tell how long of a piece of 321 I need to cut to close the gap between these elbows. That's what I'm doing now. I'm just sneaking up on the elbow, getting my angle right. And once I get everything lined up, then I'll measure this piece or measure how much longer this piece needs to be to close the gap because this is just a piece that's really close where I can kind of hold it up there and eyeball it. But this will allow me not to waste all the material I have with uh, bad cuts or uh, misjudgments. So save your scrap, because it's definitely good for that. See, this one has a joint in it, and it's halfway crooked, but it'll still get the length. And better than using a measuring tape that you can't uh, make sure it's you know, square. Well, sometimes you ain't got enough hands to hold all the pipe, so you gotta do what you gotta do. The hot side's all mocked up now. Joey actually stopped by and lent me a hand. Sometimes it goes way faster when you got four of these instead of just two, especially if you're trying to hold multiple pieces and get an idea of how the pipes are gonna run. And as I mentioned, I only had just, just enough bins uh just looking at our stack here we really didn't have anything but some some little pieces of scrap left over so just visualizing what i might need and trying to order ahead we got just enough so got lucky there really like the layout though this time just looks a lot cleaner It's always good not to be in a rush. Last year we were kind of in a rush, or I was, and I did the best I could for the lack of sleep and the five days I had to reconfigure everything and still work during the day here at the shop. So this has worked out great. We basically had, you know, with, with me being sick and stuff, we basically had about 20 days to do all the suspension stuff that we changed and reconfigure this whole turbo kit under the hood and uh, a few other odds and ends. So it's worked out great. So next, uh, I'm gonna probably come in here, maybe this afternoon or maybe tomorrow afternoon. I'm gonna weld all these joints up. I got a mark for a uh, back pressure sensor down at the bottom, which he's got a little coil there. I'm gonna make it where that can hook back up. 
and then I'm gonna place the waste gates, cut those holes, and do all that. Uh, so it'll be done. So we'll see you whenever we get back to that.
So the hot pipes are welded up. You've seen on the time lapse. I weld super slow on these. Uh, three inch pipes, pretty big pipe. It takes a little bit of heat to get through it and uh, penetrate it good. But I usually run lower amperage and weld slower because I can keep the weld more consistent. But you'll see like uh, the welds on the flanges look pretty typical, what you'd see somebody post. They got a lot of color in them and stuff. And the dabs look pretty crisp. But if you look on the pipe, it's almost, the camera won't focus good. It's almost, it's flush. Like you can't even hardly feel the weld. If there wasn't a texture difference, you wouldn't even be able to feel it. So usually when it looks like that, I know that I've got in the inside good because the weld is actually falling into the metal. Even though I'm putting filler rod in there, it's still level with the pipe on the top. And if you're adding metal and you're not gaining any height, it's going in there. So that just, uh, that's another way to kind of ensure that you're getting through uh, whenever you're not pulling everything apart and looking, which of course you've seen on the time lapse, I, I pulled the thing apart and put the camera in the pipe with the flashlight and uh, we were good to go. So I uh, put his back pressure sensor on. I went ahead and marked it before I started. And what I'm gonna do now, I'm gonna take these and put them back on the car. And I'm actually gonna weld probably a half an inch stitches all the way around where they meet the flange. I'm gonna make sure that it's not gonna move whenever I get it over here and make some heavy passes around it. So that's what I'm gonna do now. Uh, I don't know if I'll film it or not. I'm kind of pushed for time tonight. I'm trying to get this welded before I have to go home. So uh, you might just see me welding the flange when I get it back on the bench. The one thing I, I do on these as well is I do make two passes around the flange. I do one pass to make sure I've got it, you know, good and full inside the uh, joint there where the pipe meets the flange. And then I go back over it and wash it out and make it look really consistent all the way around. Just like I do, or well, just like I said with the collector, if it's got a ridge or it's got one place where it don't have enough filler or something like that, I can go back and just kind of make it all look the same all the way around. So that's what I do. And that turns out pretty good. You can see on the time lapse how I stick out the tungsten and I come in with the filler from the opposite side. And then I kind of weave the tungsten. Uh, and that's how I get in that joint right there. So put it back on the car and uh, we'll take care of the wastegates tomorrow after church and it'll be done. So we're back here this evening. We're gonna get the wastegates on and get this thing wrapped up. We've got here his old TurboSmart uh, Powergate 60s. This is what he ran on his uh, original, well, not the original, but his setup last year rather. So we got some fresh flanges for it we're gonna be using. And I'm actually gonna put aluminum dumps on it. Cause for one thing, I forgot to order the dump flanges and I had these in the back that we got made a long time ago, which you can buy them now as a production item. Uh, I forget the part number, but I've got some 11 gauge, two and a half aluminum for the dumps that we're gonna be using. So what I normally do on this, this is gonna, I can get it here. 
This is gonna be positioned in the same spot as it was right off of that bend. That way his lines can still hook up and you don't have to really change anything. So I've got a piece of two and a half over here on the bench in the vise. I'm gonna start working on this notch. I'm just gonna take a four and a half inch flapper wheel cause that's the quickest. And I'm gonna just start rocking it in the pipe like that. Just letting it kind of float back and forth on both sides. Once I get the notch somewhere close, I'll cut some length off of this where I can take this under the hood and actually hold it up to the pipe and get the notch fit exactly like I want it. And then once it's fit exactly like I want it, I'll put it in the saw and trim the leg length off until I get as short as I need it for the gate. Because these gates are pretty heavy. I don't want a piece of pipe sticking out you know, six inches. I want to get it as close to the pipe as I can. That way I can put a big fat gusset on both sides and it'll be strong enough to hold the weight of the gate when the pipe's really hot. So that's what we're gonna do. Set up the camera, start slinging some uh, stainless. So here's what we end up with. I still gotta clean the inside a little bit, but that's our stub. You can see it took me multiple trips, taking it over to the car and double checking the fitment. Because it's in the bend, the notch is not gonna be uh, straight. We've got a really big notcher back there that'll do two and a half but because the notch isn't straight and I don't necessarily know exactly what angle I want to do it, it's faster. I literally done this in about probably uh, six or seven minutes of just going back and forth and hitting it with the flapper wheel. Flapper wheel eats it up really fast, so. And we've got a really good fitment now all the way around. So we're ready to put the wastegate on, or at least tack it up, and test fit it. So like I said, I'll put this thing in a vise upside down. It's not open enough to do it right now, but I put it in a vise upside down and do all my welding with the flange on the wastegate. It really don't get hot enough to, to matter. Those gates, they can handle a lot of heat, so put some aluminum foil on the top, cram the purge hose in the top, and just let it waste some gas in there, and we're good to go. So we're gonna get that put on the wastegate now. So now that I've got it welded on, what I'm gonna do is position it on the pipe exactly where I want it. If I can hold it without dropping it. So I'm gonna want these uh, 90 degrees from the ground or basically, you know, straight up and down. I don't want them laid down like that or jacked up. I want them completely flat with the ground. So I took an angle finder 
and put on the face of the wastegate this little digital angle finder I can't do it because I only have two hands one to hold the camera and one to hold the wastegate but once I found that point I put three line up marks and I'm going to move it down so you can see I traced around the outline of it so I can always come back to that spot and what I'm going to do since I only have two hands and I'm by myself here or most of the time I'm by myself fabbing this stuff and because I don't want to bother anybody else but I'm going to take the welder and I'm going to tack this wastegate in the position it's going to be in I'm just going to put like maybe one maybe two tacks on the top none on the bottom just something to hold it hanging there so I can put the other one on and position it according to where this one is and get them to match as best I can to make it look symmetrical side to side and then whenever I pull the hot side off I can just uh, or before I pull the hot side off I can just break the waste gates off I'll have my traced out lines here where to cut out then I can put my waste gates back on finish tracing the bottom and then I'll know where to cut it out and I can do everything pretty much off the car at that point and then just put it on one last time whenever it's all welded up and done. So that just saves you some time from having to take it, uh, put it on and take it back off and vice versa. If you can just do it all in one step and take it off, do all that in one step and put it back on and you're done. So that's what we're gonna get to now. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, fit the other one up, the notch in it, get it welded up, get it fitted on this side tack them up make sure they match and then we'll start actually welding these things on so now you can see that both waste gates are on in position they're within about a half a degree of being the exact angle i want them up and down so i'm happy with that with this one also we can still reuse the lines that he already has here I thought the leg length was gonna have to be a little bit longer on that one than this one because the dump tube has to go right in the curve of the downpipe and I wasn't sure how long it was gonna have to come out. We about run out of room right behind the headlight here, but it's good to go. So I'm gonna take the hot side off and take it back there to the plasma, cut the holes, bring it back over here, uh, clean up everything, get the tubes on, gusset them up and this project will be complete. So we're gonna roll time lapse on everything if I have enough GoPro battery, which I had no idea that you could buy a battery pack uh, set for GoPro. I was so frustrated uh, trying to do all these videos. I've been doing it all on one battery. If you can imagine these batteries, they suck. They last like maybe 30 minutes of filming, 45 minutes of filming, the camera gets hot and they're dead. So I just ordered a triple pack battery with a triple charger. So we're gonna have four batteries in rotation now. So that means I can maybe get some more of this stuff on footage instead of uh, taking long breaks to charge the camera in between doing the work. So that's why uh, sometimes some details are left out because the battery's dead. So hopefully we'll be remedying that in the future so let's get this thing welded up and call it done Plasma cutter makes easy work of cutting your wastegate holes. You don't have to fight with a hole saw or any of that. And you can just clean them up with a stone. But remember, if you're gonna use the plasma cutter, uh, save yourself some time and get you a scrap piece of tubing. And especially if your wastegate, if your wastegate is in the dead middle of the pipe, you really can't do this. But if they're towards the end, cram a smaller piece of tubing up inside the pipe like that 
before you cut your hole. Let this piece absorb all of that slag. That way you have a nice clean pipe inside and there's nothing to have to sand off or clean up on the other face of your pipe where the plasma has been blowing out hot uh, metal in there. So just a little tip there. So you can see now everything's put back together. Of course, the camera battery died uh, early this morning, so I wasn't able to get the last few details. But you did see me welding the gussets onto the waste gates. Remember, we always put gussets top and bottom on the waste gates just to help hold the weight. Also helps uh, absorb some of the shock where their valves smacking up and down on the two-step just helps uh, prevent cracking in the future because that that probably sees the most abuse out of the whole hot side right there we also got our 11 gauge wastegate dumps i'm going to go ahead and tell you guys that i Put this thing on and it did not fit exactly like i wanted it to the v-band on this side tried to pull just a little bit and it wasn't quite lining up so after i got the waste gates on and everything i actually cut the hot side back apart and repositioned some stuff i actually took a section out and added a longer section in uh, to just make sure the connection was right because i don't like giving something back to somebody and them having to fight the pipes back together. I mean, everything's gonna relax a little bit after it heat cycles, but the first few times you don't want somebody to call you and say they can't get it connected. So that's gonna do it for Grub Worm for the 2022 updates. We've got a brand new turbo system, got a larger fuel cell, a wishbone in the back, different torque arm cross member, torque arm clearance panel, uh, some different bars underneath. Just a whole mess of new stuff. Whole bunch of RSM love. Don't forget this year he's upgrading to a 106 millimeter turbo. I think this is still the 102 that's on here now.
the 106 is the exact same physical size uh the outward dimensions and stuff and the way it hooks up to the piping so he'll get that swapped in and then he'll keep this one for a backup at the track in case something happens to the 106. yeah we also put him a big booty bullhorn on there sticks out a little bit more than the other one he said can we get that thing in the trailer with that bullhorn i said did you see the bullhorns on slick rick and that thing went right in the trailer so we're excited we're excited to see what it's going to do this year and uh i hope he goes as fast as he possibly can I know uh, right now I think he's trying to get his LT1 motor back together just so he can go do some testing with the new updates because the aftermarket block, the small block Chevy thing that he's going to, uh, I don't think any of that stuff's going to be ready in time to make any of the races uh, or at least the first few. So it might still be the old LT like it always has been, at least for the first few. But, uh, follow the Grub Worm page on social media for all the updates. Uh, Facebook, he keeps that page pretty updated. Uh, I'm also admin for the page, so sometimes I'll get on there and respond to people. But he's pretty much took it over now, and uh, he does a good job at keeping the, the fire lit, as you'd say. So thank you guys for watching all these updates. I know they've been kind of long and drawn out, some of them, but I've tried to give you every detail of what we've done uh so you can just keep up with the progress of the car so subscribe to the channel and we'll try to uh, keep you updated on everything else going on so see you guys He told me he's going to pull it to Texas on that trailer. <laughs>